Hi, this is Samir Bharti on behalf of the Linux Foundation. And today we have with us Ricardo Neri, a Linux kernel engineer at Intel. Ricardo, first of all, welcome to the show. And also congratulations for, for your code contribution that has become one millionth contribution to the Linux kernel. Hi, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Ricardo, so first of all, tell us a bit about yourself, your journey. When was the first time you came in contact with open source or Linux in, in, in general? Uh, that was, I think, in 2008. Uh, at the time, uh, yeah, I started. I, I, it was the time when the iPhone, the iPhone came out, and uh, yeah, at the time I, I, I used to work in Symbian, but then because of the iPhone came out, uh, Symbian sort of died. So I was transferred to a new team, which has, which was working on audio drivers for Linux. And uh, yeah, so I maybe by chance I landed on that team, and I, that's how it started 12 years ago. You had a personal interaction with the kernel community. How was that interaction? It was very daunting because I had I have heard here that it was really hard to convince maintainers uh, to take your code, and also uh, I don't know maybe intimidating because the people in the community was very smart and also they had strong opinions uh, uh, for various things. So yeah, maybe I, I'd say it was intimidating but exciting at the same time. And also yeah, it was a new world to me. So yeah, I'd say it, it was a good, it was interesting but also in, intimidating, I'd say. You have been involved since, as you said, you know, iPhone days or 2007 or six, whatever the year was. How have you seen the, the community, I'm not talking about the kernel, the project itself, I'm talking about the community. How have you seen the community itself evolve over time? Just building on, on my previous comment, uh, I saw at the time that maintainers, uh, they, they care deeply about the quality of the code and that maybe drove them to make harsh comments on, 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 on the on code from people and maybe that was like a sort of a barrier uh, for new people to start contributing. But I have seen a change in the last years in which there have been things such as new codes of conduct and uh, yeah, rules that are agreed up upon for people to maybe to, if they are hesitant or they are uh, uh, not so sure about the quality of their code, just to take it out there and uh, maybe not, they will not have, they will not, have a such a harsh reply as they it used to be in the, in the early years when I joined the open source open source community. So I think that they, that is a change that I have observed. Another change that I that I have observed is, is more companies embracing open source because at the time uh, the industry was still dominated by closed source uh, software, but now. I have seen companies building more and more business model around open source software in which the value of the of the product is not the software but the things that that you do with it. What role do you think Linux has played in kind of as you're talking about proprietary software in kind of democratizing software development where you don't have to prove yourself before you get involved. Like you, you, you send a patch, if the patch is good, if the Linux to Greg, they will take your patch. If it's not good, they will not take it. They don't have to look at your resume or CV that, hey, have you done any work before or not? So how much role has Linux played in kind of democratizing software development itself? Yeah, I think it has, it has played a, a big role because as you say, you don't have to have a college degree or a computer science degree to start contributing to it because the, the currency, as you say, is the quality of code. So I have seen, I myself, I am not a, a, a computer scientist or a software engineer. My background is electrical engineer. So probably I can be a good example of that, that you don't need to go to college for five years and study, study computer science to start contributing. Anyone can with the interest and uh, uh, to learn and to do something can start contribu contributing. Um, and, and, and I see, uh, and, and I, am the, I am not the, other, the only example. There are other people that I see that have, for instance, they have a biology degrees and by, I don't know, 
their life through them through this path and they have be, they now have become key contributors to to Linux. So I say it it is as you say you can just uh, go to the Linux kernel mailing list, read the patches, maybe contribute your own reviews, and maybe you start sending your patch. All you need is essentially a workstation with the compiler and the source code, and you can find a bug or an improvement, and, and, and you can just, just do it. You don't need anything more than that. Have you attended any of these Linux uh, plumbing or any other uh, conferences and events? Uh, yes, actually, I was just attending the Linux Plumbers Conference a few hours ago. I was in the Power Management Micro Conference, and uh, yes, and in previous years I have also been attending LinuxCon, which what used to be LinuxCon, which is now the Open Source Open Source Summit. And uh, yeah, so I I have been every now and then in those events. So as you said, you know, that when you interact with the kernel community over email, you know, it is a bit daunting and you, you, you felt intimidated because, you know, uh, I, you don't know how they will respond to the patch. But when you go and meet these developers in person, when you sit down for either breakfast or for beer in the evening, you suddenly find that they are as human as we are. So when you meet them in person how does chemistry that trust that relationship changes yeah that is that is very true because yeah as you say when you read only only if you interact with these people only through the mailing list you can only see uh, written words without any context of it and, and as you say they can this can this is prone to misinterpretation on both sides but well, actually, as you say, when you when you meet with them in in maybe in a virtual event or in person, you see that they are actually friendly. So, as I say, they do care about the quality of the code, but they, they are approachable and friendly in my experience. And that is also the experience that that I have uh, heard from all of my coworkers who are also sort of new to the to the to this community. They 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 have the same similar feedback as I do. We have talked about the community. We have talked about the project. Let's talk about your contribution. What was this uh, uh, code contribution that historically became one millionth contribution? T talk about that code. Uh, that is that is related to the work that I that I do with Intel, in which I am part of the CPU enabling team. In which whenever Intel comes up with a new feature in the processor, uh, the team to which I belong. Uh, is responsible of taking that new feature and make it consumable by the Linux kernel. So in this particular case, uh, we were this for this is for a new instruction called Serialize, which essentially uh, serialized execution of the code. It, it puts sort of like it, it puts like a sort of a, a landmark in which all the execution before that 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 instruction gets done before before starting executing the, the code after that instruction and that that is that was solving problems that we had in the past because for instance you can achieve the same goal using an instruction called cpu id or return from interrupt uh, but those, that, those instructions have a certain side effects and can have also a performance penalty. So this serialized instruction allows you to, as I said, uh, divide the execution of code but without having to uh, those side effects that you will need to fix up in, in the software. So it, it helps to make the software simpler and maybe and you have a, a performance bonus as a result of it as well. Uh, it was a, a part of a series, and uh, and also I may, probably I should mention that this 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 patch came as as uh, we uh, Andy Dotomirsky, which is a yeah, a well known contributor to the Linux kernel, suggested us to use uh, this new instruction. In a in a code path in the kernel, in which the the kernel needed to de, do this this kind of serialization, so yeah, this patch was part of, of of that series, and that maybe is a good example of how the community having so many eyes prone and pruning at the code and participating in the mailing list, you can arrive to to new ideas that 
you probably didn't have on your own or maybe your company alone will not be able to have. What role has open source played in, uh, as we were talking earlier, that you don't have to prove yourself, you don't have to, you know, uh, uh, be uh, in a specific region to, to get involved. At the same time, not only you become a contributor, you can also get access to a lot of technologies which may or may not be available wherever you are or whatever your background is. So, so talk about what role has open source played in creating a level playing field, in, in giving access to underrepresented minorities and give them not only tools, but also a voice. I, I think that the, yeah, probably what I, what I, I, it's similar to what I was saying in the beginning that in the traditional model, well, not so traditional anymore, in which you have to go to college and, uh, and then spend four years there and not work and have good grades, all of that, you need to have certain opportunities in life to be able to do that, uh, to have the luxury of attending college for five years and, 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 uh, and gain a degree. But in, in software, for instance, you, you, you don't need that. All you, all you need is to the willingness and the, and the yeah, yes, just the willingness of, of learning and con contributing to it. So I think that uh, for folks of or under underrepresented un underrepresented minority groups, I'd say that uh, yeah, statistically they have a less a chance of attending college and gaining a degree. So uh, and I I I have I have seen also companies realizing the fact that you don't actually need to be a computer scientist to start writing software. So that has opened doors for people of different backgrounds and very diverse backgrounds uh, in which you don't have to be part of a certain uh, career path or school path that can then can land you a job in this in this industry. You can just start where, wherever you wherever you want. And I also seen uh, efforts. Uh, uh, I think that from Genome that they have uh, scholarships to help to recruit people from underrepresented groups to start contributing, and they get mentoring uh, because that does, uh, that is an important point. The software is 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 free, and anyone can contribute to it. But if you have a mentor, if you have someone that can help you how to navigate the uh, 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 an open source software community, it will help you a lot and it will go a long way to, to get you established in that community. You can, you can start contributing very simple patches, but over time, you have that guidance, you can optimize your time and, and your effort to make the things that will have an impact and will maybe someday make you a key contributor to, to, to the community. Uh, Ricardo, thank you so much uh, for taking your time out and talking about your contribution and also about uh, the, the evolution of the community and the project itself. And once again, uh, congratulations for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you very much.